Hi, everybody. This is Todd Krieger. And I want to talk today about how um, trauma can affect our sexual relationships. Now, trauma is a big word. I mean, trauma, past traumas from childhood, past traumas from adulthood. Trauma is, is an experience a person has when they're not able to adequately um, and completely process that experience so that they can move on from it. And many of you that have listened to me have heard me talk about the process of eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, EMDR. And that's a very powerful, very powerful um, process that I help clients move through trauma and relatively quickly, relatively um, it, it's it's quicker than talk therapy, and we do talk doing using eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. So I do always want to start right there. That oftentimes when we have these traumatic experiences, um, it can lead to a lot of things. It can lead us to do things like infidelity, uh, that um, secrets such as secretly doing porn. Uh, now, that can cause trust issues, of course. When your partner has learned that you have secrets, that could cause a lot of trust issues. There can be intimacy hurdles. There can be um, the, the challenges of how trauma can close a person off because when you go through trauma, you tend to protect yourself oftentimes. And when you protect yourself, you're not as vulnerable. If you're not as vulnerable, you might not be as sexual, or you, be, you might be hyposexual, or you might be hypersexual, hypo. You might, your sexual uh, self might be suppressed, and maybe on some level it's from trauma, and maybe it's because your nervous system has learned to protect and shut down and feel in threat because you haven't been able to process the trauma. So. When a person doesn't process trauma and they're still this, this feeling of threat kind of pervades them and they kind of live in that stressful, threatened place, it literally can shut off the sexual response system. For some people, though, the way they deal with trauma is they distract themselves from it and they can be hypersexual and they can act out. I mean, there's other ways people act out. You could have a gambling addiction. Uh, you have a, a, a compulsive masturbation addiction as a way to act out, to to avoid. It's another way of protecting oneself from dealing with the original wounds of the trauma. Um, so also, uh, there may be difficulty in engaging in healthy sexual communication for some of the same reasons. You know, it's... It takes some vulnerability, it takes some openness, and it takes some ability to risk. And so it's easy to do that when you're feeling safe, safe in your body, safe in the relationship. And past traumas can oftentimes prevent us, whether the trauma happened because of our partner or because of previous partners or because of what happened in our family of origin, they all can lead to um, difficulties engaging in healthy sexual communication where Basically, what I mean by healthy sexual communication is being able to identify what you want sexually and to share, to, to talk about what you want, to also be interested in what the other person wants, to recognize differences uh, that, that both people have regarding sexual, sexuality and to make room. Again, it's a lot easier when you're feeling safe and trauma could be a block to that. So what are the remedies? Obviously seeking therapy might be a thing to do. I think it's very difficult and not impossible to overcome some past traumas, especially significant ones, um, without a therapist. Now, again, let me talk about trauma for example. For, for example, there are two kinds of traumas that we talk about in my field. One is the big T traumas. That's like a person who was raped, let's say, okay, molested once or twice or a few times. Okay, these are big T traumas and they can affect a person's sexuality again because you start to form um, 
you start to form a protective wall against you, uh, around you, and that can interfere. But there's also what we call the little T traumas. The little T traumas are these things that happen every day. And I talk about this with attachment wounds. Let's say you're in a family where the, you're neither parent or maybe one of the parents had a very hard time tuning into you and you you were not you were ignored or your experiences weren't made to feel like they were real that's the that's attachment trauma and so sometimes people go my my child was good you know nobody abused me or you know molested me or, you know but not always that's the case because those little t traumas can oftentimes without a person even knowing it um have people have difficulty attaching healthily to their partner, which also leads to, of course, sexual issues oftentimes. If a person has learned to um, be kind of solving their own emotional issues on their own, and they would call that the avoidant attachment style, they may have a very hard time letting the other person, receiving from the other person. They may have a very difficult time with that. And that can interfere with one's sex life. A person who had parents who were inconsistent, might, every time there's a little slight, they might get really anxious, even as an adult, because uh, there was they, they feel like one little slip might mean I'm abandoned, because maybe their parent was alcoholic. Sometimes they were sober and they were there, but when they were alcoholic, they weren't. When they were drinking, I should say, they weren't there. And so if your partner forgets to get you something in a store, you might make a big deal out of it because it, you might, it might symbolize to you, another person's letting me down. In these cases, oftentimes a person can become very sexually clingy and uh, always need reassurance, not just sexually, emotionally too, but that could also actually can crowd out the other person. The other person might feel too, um, what's the word I want to say, too engulfed. And so that the sexual relationship might suffer because the other person is like, oh, you're too dependent on me. So these are just examples of how little T traumas, like attachment traumas, where you're living in that kind of toxic environment uh, can affect you. So yes, seek therapy. Seek therapy, individual therapy or couples therapy with a therapist such as myself who specializes in trauma and relationships. Me personally, I think I'm a good fit because I specialize in trauma. I specialize in couples. And I also specialize in sexual issues. I specialize in infidelity. Those, that's kind of the whole realm of what I do. And I'm not the only one, I'm sure. But therapy can provide a safe space to explore the impact of past traumas, learn coping strategies. And also, in my case, I do trauma treatment such as EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, which helps people be able to move past some of their traumas. Uh, for example, for example, uh, one of the main reasons I learned this EMDR treatment was because as a person who specializes in low sexual desire and helping people increase sexual desire, I found my success pretty limited when a person was molested as a child. And so I tried different things and the EMDR worked amazingly where I was able to help a person go back to when they were molested, help them process that uh, experience. And they suddenly were able to claim their adult sexuality, sometimes suddenly, sometimes slowly, but uh, oftentimes faster than you might think uh, when they've been able to deal with the wounded, molested part of them and and help them give that part what it needs so they can move on and grow up and then be free to be a sexual adult person. Now, also open communication. You know, it's very important to communicate openly and honestly with your partner about your feelings, about your boundaries, about your concerns related to the trauma. Communication is... Uh, you know, I talk about EMDR as a way to process trauma, but communication is a way to process things interpersonally between two people and learning good communication skills, whether through edu educating yourself, I'll talk about that next, or using a therapist like myself can be very powerful uh, to learn how to communicate. Typically, 
without education, whether it's through a therapist, books, videos, uh, to whatever, you know, all the above, we tend to resort to the same defense mechanisms we've used before, the same defense mechanisms we've seen our parents do. And oftentimes they're not very effective, those kinds of communication dynamics that we may have learned from our family of origin. So open communication is really important. Be able to create a relationship where you both have the room to express yourselves, to have the difficult conversations, to deal with trauma where you have, let's say, the person, in the example, a person who was molested, to have a part as a child, to have a partner who's able to educate themselves about that too and can learn how to appreciate that wounded parts and and begin to help them. There's there's uh, exercises, a lady named Wendy Maltz, M-A-L-T-Z, years and years ago, decades actually now, talked about this. And it's The Healing Sexual Journey is a book. And she actually talked about how when the, when the partner is educated, there can be healthy kinds of touch where you recognize that maybe for that person who was molested in this case, touch meant danger. So you learn how to touch so that that person feels safe and you take one step at a time you might not right away go right into once you realize this is such an issue you you be patient and you don't jump right to using touch for sexual objectives but more touch for safety and then there were exercises touch for play because touch might not meant definitely not play it meant sacrificing my body for somebody else's needs in the case of someone who is molested so that's just a great book too. I'll, so shout out for that book. Um, you know, the sexual heal, the sexual healing journey. I believe that's exactly the title. I think <laughs> uh, by Wendy Maltz. Uh, so you want to learn about how trauma can affect sexual relationships. You want to understand yourself. You want to understand your partner, impact of trauma, and how how uh, both of you can navigate challenges with compassion and with empathy. As you understand the part that trauma has played in your sexual relationship, you always want to practice self-care. You want to take care of yourself physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Um, again, trauma uh, it can be very stressful. So you want to engage in activities that can bring you joy, that can bring you relaxation and a sense of well-being. So self-care is crucial for healing from past traumas. Again, I said another thing you want to learn how to do is set boundaries. Establish clear boundaries for your sexual relationship, especially as you're going through the healing of your trauma, whatever that trauma was. And you want to respect each other's boundaries. Boundaries can help create a sense of safety and trust. And that's what this is all about. Safety and trust. And lastly, take it slow. Have trust in the process. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with your partner. Healing from past traumas take time. And it's important to take things at a pace that feels comfortable for both of you. I'll say even more comfortable for the person who needs the most time, the person who's the slowest in the healing. Usually it's the person who has been affected by the trauma. And of course, sometimes both people have had their own kinds of trauma and we, we need to be sensitive to each other. So all these things are very important. You know, seek therapy. Oftentimes that's really crucial. Learn how to be openly communicative with each other. Educate yourself about trauma and how it can affect sexual relationships as well as our other parts of the relationship. Practicing self-care, set boundaries, and be patient, take it slow. These are all very important uh, aspects of, of uh, becoming aware of how trauma can affect your sexual relationship and also how to heal from it. So uh, that's what I wanted to say. I think it's a very important topic. This is Todd Krieger, Making the World Safe for Love. Wish you well.